at Woodland Public Library, which is one of the Halifax Public Libraries. I'm hoping that you'll do a craft with me today. HPL has started a series called Kickstart Creativity, where we encourage you to make crafts with things that you already have at your house. So supplies, sometimes even garbage. I'm gonna be using some of my recyclables today. Stuff that you already own to give new life to things and make something beautiful. Part of my goal here is also to do something that you can do with your friends and family of any age. So I've started doing crafts with my family and the youngest person who does crafts with us is four. He's my nephew. The oldest person is in her 70s. So we cover the whole age range and I'm trying to find crafts that are really good and doable by everybody in that whole age range. So I'm hoping that you'll find this one is as well. The one we did last week was the paper uh, weaving one, um, which you could make into cards or placemats, whatever you want. And we're going to be using the same skill today, but we're going to be making something different with different supplies. So that one you only needed paper and scissors for. This one you need a couple more things, but still hopefully things that you already own. Mainly what you're going to need, some yarn, a pair of scissors, and then a piece of cardboard. So the ones that I did the other day, I made on a paper plate, but you can also make them just out of some old recyclables that you're getting rid of. So this is just from a Lucky Charms box because Lucky Charms are delicious. I just pulled it right out of our recycling container. And from just those few supplies, we are going to make a beautiful hand woven bowl. So this is the first one that I ever made and you can see it is not perfect. But I made it with my own hands and I made it out of things that, if not, weren't going to get used. So I think that's really cool. And even though it's not perfect, I'm really happy with it. It doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful. And I think that if I keep making them, they could get better and better and I could make them in different colors. And I'm definitely going to keep drying them and seeing how I can make them better and cooler and yeah, maybe just a little more well done because that one's a little bit lopsided. But it's still going to hold stuff, except cereal or soup. Don't put anything that's kind of wet in there. I would say no food at all, in fact. That's my rule now. So let's get started. I've lost my marker. Oh, no, I didn't. It was right here. So I'll start by showing you what I've done on a paper plate, but I'll also show you how to do it with just some recyclable cardboard. So we're going to start by taking a marker or a pencil, a pen, a crayon, anything you've got that writes. And I'm going to start making little marks about this, the length of your nail, maybe, but this long along the edge of the paper plate. And it doesn't really matter how many marks I make, but I want to make sure that I end up with an uneven number of sections. And it's probably better to have at least seven sections. Other than that, though, it's really up to you. So I'm going to start by just making them pretty randomly. I'm trying to make them roughly the same size, but it's not a big deal if they're not the same size. So I'm going to do most of the lines and then when I get about three quarters of the way around the plate, I'm going to count them and see how to properly do the last couple lines so I make sure I have an uneven number. So right now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven. So that means that I want to make sure I stay at an odd number. So right here. I think I'm just going to make one line so that makes it into two big spaces. So you can see from doing that that they're not exactly going to be even. Some of them are going to be bigger, some of them are going to be smaller, but it doesn't really matter because again, whatever you make doesn't have to be perfect. It's whatever you're happy with. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a circle in the center of this. Now you can use whatever you want. You can hand draw a circle, doesn't make a big difference. I'm not very good at hand drawing good circles. So I'm going to take this mason jar lid that I had around and I'm just going to put it right in the middle of my plate right here and I'm going to trace around it with my marker to make a nice base for my bowl. So tracing there, you end up with a circle in the center. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to cut along all these little lines and I'm going to cut from where they start at the edge right into the circle, but I'm not going to cut all the way through. So from the line to where the circle starts. 
So I'll just do a couple to show you what that'll look like. So you can see they look like this. So it's gonna kind of look like a sun towards the end that has like a middle part and then rays shooting out in all directions. I'll show you one that I have that I started weaving, but you can still see the shape that it was at the time. So we've got all these little bits and then the circle in the center. So to do the same thing with a piece of just leftover cardboard that you have at home, all you're gonna do is you're gonna take the cardboard and you're going to get something circular or hand draw, but again, hand drawing a good circle is really hard. And I'm just gonna take this paper plate because it's circular. I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna take one that doesn't have cuts in it. That'll make it easier. I'm gonna take the paper plate, I'm gonna lay it on here, and then I would just draw around it. So trace this, and you end up with a circle. And I did this before when I was preparing, so you can see here's my circle made from the Lucky Charms box. And then I would do exactly the same thing I did with the plate, but on here. So I have made lines all along the edges to cut into the right shape. I didn't have the mason jar lid when I did this, so you can see the circle's a little bit wonky, but it'll still do the trick. And then I would just do the same thing. So I would cut from the outside edge where the line is right down to where the circle starts. And again, I'm just gonna start doing one so you can see what that looks like. So I've got a couple of these started now. It's gonna look exactly the same as the paper plate. Um, and you would just keep going all the way around so you cut all of yours separate. So the next thing you would do is if this were all already cut, which it isn't because as you saw, I only cut a couple, what you would do next is you would take your yarn and you leave it attached to the ball. Actually, you know what? This yarn's not gonna show up very well. So I'm actually gonna switch over and do it with this pink yarn, which you'll be able to see a little bit better. And I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna run it around one of these, one of the spokes, and then I'm gonna tie it and we'll leave a little tail at the end. Tie that and double knot it. So that's just gonna hold that right there. And then from there, that one you can see goes in front, which means the next one we want to go under. And then we would just keep weaving in and out. So since I haven't cut enough of the pieces here, I'm gonna to switch to one that I already had started to show you what would happen next. So you can see we've gotten pretty far on this one already. And so just imagine this is where we started on the last one. So this one, this pink piece is going over and then we're gonna put it behind the next one, under. And then we're gonna weave it over and behind and over and behind, over, behind, and over and behind. So you just keep doing that over and over and over again. The only thing that I need to note, which took me a little bit longer than it should have for me to realize, is that it's really important that you bend the spokes up the whole time you're doing it. So I'll show you on this one again. So what I'm gonna do is just bend the spoke so it stands straight up right where the circle is. So this one would go here, straight up, and you would do that all the way around. Because if not, you can see this one is turning into less of a bowl and more of a kind of rounded plate, and we want it to be more of a bowl. So just make sure when you're doing it that you put all the spokes so they're facing right up. And then all you're gonna do is keep weaving. So over, under, over, under, under, and you can stop and start this at any time. Another cool thing that you can do is you can do one color for a bit and then you could change to a different color. All you have to do is, I'll show you how you end it and you would do the ending and then you would tie another one on 
just as we did at the very beginning, to start the next piece and you'd keep going. So when you're getting close to the end, what you want to do is cut off a little tiny tail. So I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut off a little tail. Like that. And then this tail we want to just weave in so it stays stuck down into this. So we'll go, that's under, this one's over. And then we'll put it under back here. And then I'm going to take it and just stick the tail back beneath some of the weaving that you've already done. And it should stay there pretty tightly. If you're worried about it and you have a glue gun, you could glue that piece down, but I haven't had any trouble with them coming unraveled. Now, of course, this one is not finished, but if we switch over to the one that I do have finished, I'll show you how I did the tops. So when you get to the tops, if they weren't already folded down, because I got ahead of myself, they would all be sticking up like this. So all you want to do is fold the tops down, just the end of the plate or the piece of uh, cardboard down over it so that they make kind of like a little lip, like a bowl might have all the way around. If you wanted to, again, you could glue these down with a, a hot glue gun would be your best bet. But I finished this one about a day and a half ago and it hasn't popped back up or anything. So they stay pretty well. Now, my niece and nephew actually decided that the best way to finish this would be to color inside here to match and to color on the bottom to match, which you can definitely do. You could also just put some glue down and then take a piece of yarn and make like a spiral of yarn and stick it in the glue all the way around to cover it to match. But you can also just leave it empty, especially if you're gonna be putting stuff in it, you're probably not gonna see the bottom that often. So it's really up to you. It's kind of always up to you with these sort of crafts. So I think that's just about it. The only other thing I thought I would mention is sometimes they start to overlap a little bit more than you want them to. So you can see even with these, once you put them straight up, they're no longer laying next to each other. They're covering each other a bit. And that gets annoying and a bit hard to weave between after a while. So all you would do in that case is you can cut the side here down a little bit. So I'm gonna just take that. So now it's more of a rectangle where before it was more like a triangle. So you can see this one is kind of triangular. It goes out at the top, whereas this one stays sort of the same size. And you can do that to all of them. And it just makes it a little easier to weave in and out. So that's it. It's a pretty easy craft. You probably need about half of a ball of yarn to do one full bowl. If you want it to be a little bit easier, you, or you just want to be done a bit faster, you can get really chunky yarn and that just goes a lot faster because it's thicker pieces. If you want to use all different colors, you can, as I mentioned, it's totally up to you. So thank you so much for doing this craft with me. I'd love to hear about it if you enjoyed doing this craft. And if you end up taking time to do this craft and you want to take a picture and send it to us, we would love to see it. There should be a hashtag just below this video that I think is Kickstart Creativity HFX for Halifax. And if you tag it with that, then we'll be able to see it, which we would love. I hope that you're having a lovely day and I hope that next week you'll do another craft with me and maybe with your family as well. Thank you so much and have an awesome day. Bye.